Hi, I'm Nicole Poole. I'm a multidisciplinary artist and creative change maker in Oklahoma City. And I am so excited for you to join us today because a lot of students across Oklahoma, and I can say this because I used to be one, you're not aware that a career in the arts is something that's available to you. Now you might be saying, ah, but I'm not an artist. Well, that's okay. If you are an artist, fabulous. There are many careers in Oklahoma that are ready for you. But if you're someone who just enjoys being around the arts, or if, if you haven't been around the arts a lot, if you like a colorful and inclusive and dynamic and innovative environment, and you're somebody who you enjoy organizing things or telling stories or working with your hands or figuring out technical stuff or working with teams, well, guess what? There's an industry here with great careers that you can join if you want to. So please be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel because that's why we're here. Over the next few months, we're gonna be uploading as many videos as we can um, by people who are working in the arts in Oklahoma to tell you about their jobs and give you some advice for how to get into them if that's something you wanna do. So what we're really excited about today to focus on is the film and television industry in Oklahoma. And it's a really exciting time right now. Business is booming. Giant studios are bringing in their big films. The Oklahoma Film and Music Office is overseeing everything. The legislature is all excited about it. And you've got people who are coming in to build giant sound stages in the middle of Oklahoma City. You've got people who have built the Oklahoma Film and Television Academy to help train professional crews to support these big budget films. So this industry is just getting warmed up. By the time you graduate from high school, it's gonna be primed and ready for you to join it, if you so choose. So we've uploaded a lot of videos with a lot of information from various sectors of film, and there are a lot of roles in film. We've got about 20 of them for you to look at today. So keep watching. I'll be finished talking in just a minute, or less than a minute, I swear. Right after me, there's a great brief video from the Film and Music Office about getting started in film and television. And then you get to hear from Ella Janes. She is a dynamic, fantastic director living and working in Oklahoma. And she is about your age. So many things are possible right now. So Ella is going to take you through how to, how to look through the videos and what some of the terminology means. So watch that. And then right after that, as a bonus, we have got the leaders of the film and television and creative industries in the entire state talking on a panel about why they're excited about this moment in time, how it came to be, what's going on, and some practical advice for you. If they were your age, what do they wish they would have known so that they could get started on their careers early? So we hope all of this is gonna be a really valuable resource for you. But no matter what career you decide, and of course we hope that you will join the arts, but no matter what, you are the next wave of creative talent that will shape Oklahoma, that will shape our lives. And we're really hoping that whatever career you choose to do, it's you're choosing it because it's something that you really love. Thank you for being here, and we still hope you'll join us. Bye. Hey, quick question. What do these jobs have in common? Accountant? Carpenter, beautician, electrician, photographer, graphic artist, interior designer, choreographer, writer, chef, seamstress. They all work in the Oklahoma film industry. And there's a place for you to join the action. Learn more about starting your film career in Oklahoma by visiting okfilmmusic.org forward slash getting started. I'm Ella Janes and I'm a director and screenwriter living here in Oklahoma City. I started directing when I was seven and I recently directed a commercial for Crayola and Goldie Blocks. And just last year, my first ever short film that I directed and wrote um, was in the Dead Center Film Festival here in Oklahoma City, making me the youngest ever Dead Center participant, um, which is really exciting. So if you've ever dreamed of making movies, then Oklahoma might just be the place for you. Oklahoma's film and television industry is booming. There's no better time than now to start making your dreams come true. In these videos, you'll hear from Oklahoma filmmakers describing the many jobs involved in making a movie, 
what they love about what they do and what you can start to focus on if you want to join them in the film industry. We've divi divided the videos into four categories that follow production from start all the way to the finish. Packaging starts way before the film even gets made. It's basically the assembly of all the people whose names are recognizable to the public, like actors, directors, producers, and screenwriters who come together to get a movie financed. Once the film gets green-lighted, meaning there's actually funding to produce it, it's time to really start planning. That's where pre-production comes in. Everything needs to be designed and planned from budgeting and scheduling to locations, crew and talent to storyboards, lighting, costumes and equipment. Then we move into production, which is when the film is actually shot and all those pre-production plans are put into play and a lot of people join the crew. From carpenters to camera operators, sound operators to makeup artists, electrical teams to drivers and production managers to extras, everyone has a role to play. Last but not least is post-production. This is where people like editors, composers, sound mixers, and digital effects specialists come in to polish all that footage that was shot in production, turning it into the completed film audiences around the world get to see. We've got some great insights from people in each of the aspects of film production, so take a look and see which one might be right for you. I'm so excited for you to start this journey, and I hope to see you on a set one day. Hello and welcome. Thank you so much for your time today. Uh, so let's start with introductions. Melody, would you mind starting? I'd be happy to, Nicole. My name is Melody Blancet. I have two roles that I'm here today for, one of which is I'm a member of the Oklahoma State uh, House of Representatives as a representative for House District 78 in Tulsa. And I'm also executive director of a nonprofit organization called Creative Oklahoma, which whose mission is to advance a innovation and creativity based economy in our state. Wow, awesome. Thank you for being here. Richard? Well. Hi, guys. I'm Richard James. I'm a producer director here in Oklahoma. Um, I uh, co-founded Green Pastures Studio, which is just on the border of Oklahoma City and Spencer, uh, just east of the city here. Um, and then we also co-founded the Oklahoma Film and TV Academy, which if you have a look at Steve's hat later on, you can see it mm. on his hat, which is very nice. Thank you, Steve. Um, yeah. My background is uh, I started off in England. That's my funny accent, like Harry Potter and then made my way to Los Angeles and then searched America looking for a place to call home and found Oklahoma. And I'm so happy to be here because there's so much going on. Awesome, glad you're here. All right, Jennifer. Hi everyone, OCO as we say in the Cherokee Nation. I'm Jennifer Lauren, I am the director <laughs> of the Cherokee Nation Film Office and original content for the Cherokee Nation. Um, I was hired by my tribe six years ago um, to create content for them. So I'm actually also a filmmaker. I am the host and executive producer and director of OCO Voices of the Cherokee People, which is a docu-series that you can um, find online anytime at OCO.tv. Um, we have been working as a Cherokee Nation Film Office for about two years now. Awesome. Thank you so much. Moving on to Steve. Hi, I'm Steve Mathis. Uh, I grew up here in Oklahoma and couldn't wait to get out. I graduated from the University of Oklahoma and the first thing I did was get out of Oklahoma. But this was in 1976 and I moved back in 2013 after 30 some 37 years in Los Angeles working on movies. And I've done about 110, maybe 111 films. Uh, most of them interesting, some of them terrible. I've done three movies here in Oklahoma, Turkey Bowl, Minari, and whatever we got done of Reagan before it shut down. So uh, I moved back because I wanted to be here and I'm in I included, I'm included in this, I guess, because I enjoy teaching these kids and teaching them that living in Oklahoma is not a geographical nor uh, or creative barrier 
to realizing your dreams. If I can do it from a small town uh, where I was born to Los Angeles, anybody can do it if you wanted to do it hard enough. And so that's why I'm here is to spread that gospel. All right. Thank you so much. Okay, Jay. I'm Jay Shanker. I'm a lawyer in Oklahoma City. I can vouch for Steve. He and I attended high school together. So uh, we, we can all do this. Uh, my work has been exclusively in the entertainment industry for the last almost 40 years, 25 years in Los Angeles. Uh, in addition to film work, I work in theater, music, book publishing, uh, live events, video games, sports law, and a lot of things in between. Uh, and my clients are all over the world, but particularly in Los Angeles and New York, and increasingly here in Oklahoma. And uh, I've got two kids thinking about what their careers are going to be. And uh, I'm, I'm devoted to the prospect that everything's possible these days in Oklahoma. Awesome. Thank you so much. All right. And Tava? Hi, everyone. Uh, I am Tava Malloy-Sofsky, and I actually grew up in Ada, Oklahoma. And um, after graduating from University of Oklahoma um, many years ago, there at the time was not a film industry here to speak of. So I did, um, just like Steve and Jay um, and, and Rachel, uh, moved to Los Angeles and worked in Hollywood making movies for many, many years. But um, fortunately, I found my way back home. And um, I'm here to tell all of you and your parents that there is a film industry. It is thriving in Oklahoma. And, and that's part of the reason I came back also because um, of family and just quality of life. But uh, there are jobs here waiting for you to make movies, create content, work on television shows, doing whatever you love. So um, I'm proud to be here. I am the director of the Oklahoma Film and Music Office. We are a state um, agency and we are here to support and grow and connect um, all the dots for Oklahoma film and television and music. Glad to be here. Great, thank you. Right. Hi, uh, I'm Rachel Cannon. I am a actress and a, the co-CEO of Prairie Surf Studios and Prairie Surf Media. Um, after living in Los Angeles for 20 years, um, working on mostly sitcoms from uh, Two and a Half Men, The Big Bang Theory. I did the final season of Mad Men, uh, which was an extraordinary experience. And um, I spent the last six years working on a show called Fresh Off the Boat on ABC, which um, a lot of kids your age probably uh, probably watch. Um, so after spending 20 years in Los Angeles, I decided that I wanted to raise my little boy back in Oklahoma. So. I bought a house in Oklahoma thinking that I would just travel back and forth for work, which I did for a year and a half, and um, found that there was this uh, beautiful burgeoning industry here in Oklahoma City right underneath my nose. And so I decided to go all in and really invest in uh, the industry here in Oklahoma. So I founded Prairie Surf Media uh, with my partner, Matt Payne, and we just took over the Cox Convention Center and we're turning it into a film studio. So uh, we are really excited about just the opportunity that is here in Oklahoma. And my dream is that none of you have to leave Oklahoma to be a part of the entertainment industry because I had to move um, really far away from home and to be away from my family for a really long time to pursue the industry that I love. And nothing would make me happier than for no kid to ever have to do that again. So here's to Oklahoma. <laughs> Yay, great. Thank you so very much. All right, so so jumping in, um, in your own professional life, what about Oklahoma filmmaking at the moment are you most excited about? Melody? From a legislative perspective, um, I, I have the capability to see what's going on across the state. And so I work with a variety of people in Tulsa, Oklahoma City, and see all of the various new projections that are coming out. And I have never seen as much activity as I have seen lately. I also worked with um, Tava and a number of other people to increase the incentive for um, film productions here in Oklahoma so that we can 
encourage job growth here in our region. And we've been successful in doing that. And there is a lot of legislative interest in continuing that progress. And so I have seen not only productions come to Oklahoma, but the a number of jobs that are available, the pay that is available. And as a result, there are plenty of education and training opportunities that are really coming for us. So that's what I see as exciting. Wow, great, thank you. And thank you for your work in making that happen. All right, and Rachel. So um, I would say the thing that I am most excited about is, you know, really the accessibility of our leadership. Um, you know, really seeing that oh, there is such a hunger for entertainment here in Oklahoma. And I think now that we have stages starting to pop up and um, so many programs to influence education, um, that there is a pivot industry opportunity for people to um, to work in this industry. And you may think that film and entertainment isn't an opportunity for you, but what I would say is that we are filled with construction jobs and electricians and catering and accountants and seamstresses. And there are just so many job opportunities um, that you can find a career in entertainment. Um, and they're high paying jobs. I think because of the entertainment industry, the average income, the average wage is $106,000 a year working in the entertainment industry. So what I would say is take those skills um, put them to good use. You don't have to be a creative in front of the camera or a producer or a writer to work in this industry. Um, there are so many wonderful opportunities. And um, Melody, like you said, I think that the legislation is more excited about film than ever. Um, doing our part to help influence uh, getting, that, getting that cap lifted on that rebate so that we can get some of the streamers to come and do TV shows here and to really create a sustainable um, industry so that it's not just one-off films here and there, which is wonderful, but what if we could get TV series and what if we could have year-round work for people to work in this industry? And that's, I think that's really the goal. Um, and I think every single person on this Zoom will agree with me that we are all working uh, around the clock to make that a reality for you guys. So. I would just say the accessibility of our leadership and um, the ability to move mountains in Oklahoma. The one thing I will say, being in California for 20 years, Oklahoma is a yes state. Oklahoma is where things can happen. Um, and the reason they happen is because this is a state where people step up behind you and they say, that's a great idea. Let me help you do that. Or what can I do to support your vision? Um, and, and the rest of the country, is not like that. It is so good to be home and to be surrounded by people who uh, who want to light your dreams on fire and run alongside you. So um, I think I had to leave Oklahoma to realize how wonderful it is. And it is so good to be home. What a great perspective. Thank you. All right, Richard. Well, so I think I, I, I'm not going to uh, say the same as the other guys here, uh, because everything they've said is absolutely true. And it's the reason why I'm in Oklahoma. Right? I love it here. It's phenomenal. And there is so much opportunity. If we look at how are you consuming entertainment at the moment, right? Netflix. Rachel just mentioned Netflix. Probably Disney Plus. That wasn't around a year ago. We've got HBO Max. Who bought HBO Max to go and see Wonder Woman that Steve worked on down there with his off the cap, right? There are so many streamers that are launching their content that what that means is that entertainment in general is making a ton more film and TV shows around the world. And it's less and less focused on Los Angeles. You look, Georgia's got a big industry now. And if you look at who owns Netflix and where are they based and who owns Apple, they're not in Los Angeles, they're elsewhere. If you look at Who's driving all this amazing special effects now? It's actually the guys that created Fortnite, which many of you may have been playing. They're driving the special effects. So what's happening is we're seeing a lot of these jobs moving out from the Los Angeles market and trying to find homes in places like Oklahoma, where we have people like Melody and Tava who are working so hard to bring all these jobs here. So when I look at Oklahoma, 
and I look at the opportunity that we have here, there are billions of dollars, that's with a B, billions of dollars looking to be spent that they haven't decided where to spend yet. And with the work that everyone here is doing, Rachel with the fantastic convention center, Steve with the education, Tava with her office, everything that Jennifer's doing up with the Cherokee Nation, we've got a great group of people coming together to create a really solid industry so that if this is a career that you want to go into, whatever you want to do within the industry, there will be enough work here to support you in a really solid way so that you can stay in a place where there's not much traffic. I've lived in Los Angeles, it's traffic everywhere. Where we have trees and fresh air, Los Angeles is always concrete. I see Rachel laughing, it's, it's true, isn't it? There's so much that's wonderful about Oklahoma. And now we have all these jobs coming in uh, that really, whatever you want to do, we hope is gonna be available for you. So I'm most excited about all those jobs. Rock on. Thank you so much. All right, Jennifer. Richard is always a tough act to follow with his <laughs> energy, but I feel his energy. And I think we all on this call are so excited about this industry. And really, you know, everything that we're doing right now um, as grownups with our careers is we're doing it for you, for kids your age, because we want you guys to be able to work in this amazing industry and to be able to create cool, awesome projects to be in film and TV and creating these in just whatever you can imagine, you know, um, film is such, it's, it's such a wonderful medium and television, the way that it works, you know, being able to communicate with people on that level is so effective. Um, and so I always tell people that if you want to change the world, get a creative job, do something where you can flex your creative muscle. And this industry in particular, being in film and television, you can, you can flex your creative muscle and you can change the world. And so I am most excited about getting kids from Oklahoma. You can live in Salisaw, you could live in Tulsa, you can live in Muskogee, Pahuska, Lawton, small town, big city, wherever you're from, you can be in this industry. And that's what excites me is that I feel like there's always been this, oh, you know, that's Hollywood, that's LA, that's so big time. And I'm just from this small town in Oklahoma. Well, it's not like that anymore. And I love seeing the light go off in kids' eyes when they realize I can do this and there is a place for me in this industry here in Oklahoma even, thanks to the work of a lot of people on this call. Um, but that's what's most exciting to me is that you can be from anywhere in Oklahoma and find a place in this industry. And really, uh, you, can get, you can get into this industry with any level of education. You don't have to have a college degree to get into this industry either. Absolutely. Thank you. Nicole, can I interrupt yeah. for just a yeah, course. and introduce somebody? Haley? Sure. Um, so Haley just got a full-time job with Prairie Surf Media. She just graduated. <laughs> she just graduated from the University of Oklahoma. And whereas I had to leave um, Oklahoma to go pursue um, a, a career in the industry, Haley does not have to because she gets to do it right here in Oklahoma. And I just think that's so fun to share. Wow, great. Congratulations, Haley. Thanks for sticking around. <laughs> I mean, I love it. We have so much happening here, and I think it's going to be a really exciting couple of years. Rocket, thank you so much. It's nice to meet you. Nice to meet all of you. Cool. Yay. Thanks, Rachel. That was great. <laughs> well, speaking of small towns, Steve, I think you mentioned that you were from one. What What's exciting oh. for you right now as a small town guy being in Oklahoma? Well, I made enough money to afford a bathroom. And that was a good thing. <laughs> upgrade from my upbringing. Uh, I think having these studios, OFTA and the Cox uh, Center are great. Because up until now, we haven't really had a place we had to shoot in warehouses uh, and things like that, which you can do. But like Atlanta, we're starting to get some stages. And when the stages come, people will come if the projects come. When I did Thor Ragnarok at Pinewood Studios, there was nothing around the studio. It was out in the middle of nowhere. It was sort of like Oklahoma Film and Television Academy is right now. It's out in the middle of nowhere. And now 
you go to Pinewood and there's hotels and bars and everything else around it. And this is the goal. This is what we're all talking about here, really, is to get people to move back here and participate in a film industry that treats everybody fairly and well and makes good stuff. And I'm part of that and I'm all down for that. All right. Thank you, Steve. Cool. All right. So moving on to Jay Shanker. You know, the insights that you all have shared are all terrific. I think we've hit the point in Oklahoma, uh, particularly over the last year, and because of the creativity, imagination of people on this panel, uh, we're really at what we would call an inflection point or critical mass. Uh, the training opportunities that Gray Fredrickson, an Academy Award winner, brought to Oklahoma Community College, trained a lot of people who are now training other people. Uh, Richard, the program that you guys are developing at your studio means many, many more young people can get the basic skills they need to work immediately on films. Low level stuff, as Steve described, somehow those entry, sometimes those entry level jobs are not only the only thing available to you, but they're exactly what you need to advance your career. I've represented lots of people that have gone to film schools at NYU or UCLA or USC in California uh, or the American Film Institute who finish two years of graduate work and don't have the level of experience that someone doing two years of community college in Oklahoma get because they're welcomed, people are willing to share expertise and insights with them. They don't have the cost of living so they can work on smaller projects and, and hold a day job or a weekend job in between projects to make it work. And you can really get as good a, an education in a lot of categories as an entry level film or television working on commercials here as you can in what have historically been these big centers. So that's what I'm most excited about, that as we've all said, you can do it from Oklahoma. You can work on TikTok projects or music projects or, or you know, bring theater to film, things that because of distribution now, you can get audiences of 10,000 or 100,000 without having to go to a major distributor or have a network behind you. That's going to be true all over the country, but we've hit kind of a critical mass and scale here that I think is really going to accelerate the momentum. And if you're 14 and thinking about this business, it really is quite possible this could be the area in which you can work in your future. Yeah. Yeah, great. Thank you so much, Jay. All right, and last but certainly not least, <laughs> Tava, what are you excited about in Oklahoma filmmaking now? Oh, wow. I mean, everything that everyone here has said, um, Representative Blanchett really kind of, you know, kicked us off talking about the, the level of support and the fact that uh, Oklahoma does have an incentive. Um, and, and, and for those of you eighth graders um, who don't know, an incentive is just a little shiny object that we wave in front of uh, filmmakers whether to either keep them in Oklahoma or to lure them from wherever they are in the world to come here to create their content to um you know to to showcase our beautiful locations we have 12 eco regions I didn't know that as a kid and I grew up in Oklahoma I had to like Rachel and and there's five of us that are from Oklahoma that had to leave so I hope that if you don't remember anything else you will remember that today is different. I mean, times are different in Oklahoma and you don't have to leave, that there really are open doors here. Um, it is a land of opportunity. So I really love um, um, most that we do have the support from the top down. I think that's really, really important. I also absolutely am just so excited that I'm talking to eighth graders right now. I have three teenagers myself, one eighth grader in Edmond. And, um, you know, he's a YouTube, they're all YouTube creators. They're creating content every day, writing music. And um, I just think that um, Oklahoma is um, positioned so, you know, perfectly in the middle of the country. You don't, you can hop on a plane and go anywhere to visit and, and go do something, but there's just so much opportunity right here in our state. And I just love seeing, you know, the, career tech schools so if you're you know as you get up into high school and you can start um you know go, take it, doing some training at those schools and some of these other training facilities in oklahoma 
um, in the colleges like O Triple C and 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 places like that that are teach that are training. Um, you know, there's it's just it's just one step away for you to um, learn a new skill set and and just create and tell stories. And so I just love that. Um, I mean, everyone here has 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 talked about just how there's so much support and opportunity here. And um, so that's what I love, just everybody working uh, together to, to really elevate Oklahoma. Absolutely, thanks. And mm -hmm. personal, oh yeah, go ahead, Melody. Just one qu very quick thing, Nicole, I was just gonna say, um, we are putting a lot of emphasis at the legislature and in state government in bringing these films um, and these production companies here to do work. We can't be successful in doing that unless we have the workers, that's the right. trained mm -hmm. workers. So that's why we are appealing to you guys that are mm -hmm. considering your careers right now. We desperately need you to train in the creative industries area so that we can hire you in the film productions that we're gonna be recruiting and that we are being, being really growing here in Oklahoma. There is so much opportunity right now. We are at the cusp of explosion mm -hmm. and we have got to have workforce. So that's <laughs> why we are desperate to get all of you to be interested and to believe that there's a career here. Excellent. Thank you so much. And mm -hmm. actually, that is a perfect segue. Rapid fire, come in when you like. What what advice if you were if you were 14 again, what would you be doing to prepare yourself for a career in film? Get in there. Watch, watch movies. That's what I tell every class. I say, if you don't watch movies or watch things streaming, how I mean, that's what you do, you know, mm -hmm. and I'm mm -hmm. stunned by the number of people that I work with that don't go to movies. That's what I would tell a 14 year old watch movies and read books. I'm going to add to that quickly, you know, watch, watch movies, but watch with an edge. Uh, watch movies for fun. It's like reading books for classes at school. Uh, everybody complains when they have to do an essay. It's, you know, the reading's not so much fun. So I'm not suggesting that you stop watching movies for pleasure. But when you learn about some of these career opportunities, Steve, Steve works in what's in effect lighting design, creating light and mood as a character in a film. If you suddenly know that's what somebody does on a film, you look at all the credits at the end of a movie. And we all wonder, what do all these people do? Well, that's part of the test. Figure it out. And then watch a movie and say, so how was that edited? How did the editing add to this? How did, how did the acting and directing interact? Was the script well written? Did, did they miss something? Could I have changed the story around? Or the dialogue? Uh, think about costuming. Think about music and how music impacts the experience. And when you can start to sort of see how movies come together or a commercial or a television series you like, then you, you, you begin to understand how you can fit in to those and bring your own skill set and insight to that process. Uh, you know, I've got writer clients who got into the television business because they had a favorite series, a sitcom or dramatic series, and they wrote a script on their own to tell the story and submitted it. And the people that produce these shows hire writers because they say, gee, great story, great edge. You brought something exciting to a character. Well, you may never have an opportunity as a 14 or 15 year old, but that kind of fan fiction is the way lots of great writing careers get started. All of this is at your disposal. There are film festivals that you can enter into as, as a filmmaker around the country uh, and make your own movies, even if it's on a cell phone without camera gear and get critical response and bring your friends in at school or outside to do that kind of work. It's, it's all at your disposal. Um, and that's, that's what's great about being 14 and interested in the space now that wasn't available, I don't think, for any of us only a few years ago. I think just to jump on Shay's comment there, Many of you have got one of these, right? Or you're, you have a family member or someone who has one of these. Now, there are films being made with these that are getting massive release at the moment. So you are at a stage now in a time in history 
where you've got an amazing device in your hand where you can go out and you can create your own stories. And don't try and copy what the big Hollywood movies are doing, right? Think about a story that is important to you, something personal to you, that you can pick this up and you can tell that story. I'll tell you a little, uh, a little anecdote on that was that there were a couple of guys that decided that they wanted to make a movie about, um, about traveling on airplanes. And this was, this was in Los Angeles, right? It's impossible to film anything on airplanes because it's so expensive. And the idea of going to airports, they went and shot the whole thing on an iPhone with two actors. They'd walk around filming. No one would think they were actually filming a feature film, but they shot it all on this. They put it up for some film festivals. And here's a little trick on some film festivals. They couldn't afford the entry fee because a lot of these film festivals have entry fees. So they phoned the people who ran the film festival and said, this is my story. This is who I am. I can't afford the entry fee. Would you please accept it? And a lot of film festivals do when you make that phone call. So they made that phone call. Someone saw it. Someone got it to an actor called Will Smith, who some of you may know. Will Smith saw it, took it to Universal, Universal bought it, and is now paying them to write the full feature film for Will Smith to be in. All because rather than talking about it all the time, they picked up their cell phone and they shot a film. And you need to be, you need to be shooting an awful lot. If this is an area that you want to get into, constantly have that video up, even if you're making it for TikTok, right? There's so much you can make for TikTok but be shooting stuff so that you understand camera angles, you understand depth, you understand the way lighting is hitting, the way your clothes are interacting, and just have fun. Because that's one of the things that all of us here are doing, is that we've found careers where we love what we do. We don't go to work and go, oh, I hate it. Well, perhaps a couple now and again. But most of the time, we love what we do. And we wake up in the morning excited to get to work. And my hope for all of you watching this, whether it's our entertainment industry or not, is that whatever career you go into, you wake up in the morning and say, I love what I do. And that's something that the film industry can bring. And so my advice would be pick up the phone, start creating stuff, send it over to the Dead Center Film Festival, which is brilliant, and send it to other film festivals so that you can start to get that experience going. Awesome. Um um, so I will add on to that and just say, um, don't be afraid to dream big, like ridiculous big, um, you know, listening to, uh, you know, people say, this is what I'm going to do when I grow up. And, um, the best compliment that I could have received when I said that I was going to grow up and I was going to join, you know, the entertainment industry and I was going to become an actress and move to California. People said I was crazy. Um, because I don't know anybody in California. I don't know anything about the entertainment industry. So why would I possibly choose that? Well, I went and I figured it out. And um, the only person who can stop you from achieving your dreams is you if you never try. And so what I will say is um, there are no boundaries to what you can achieve. There are no boxes that anybody can put you in. Um, there are, are no limits to what you can accomplish as an artist. Um, unless you prevent yourself from ever trying. And to everything that has been said here, take a class, find a mentor, teachers, the, the ability for you to step into one of any of these programs and to find a mentor that cares about you, that cares about the next generation of filmmakers, because that's truly what we're all doing. We're all taking the next chapter of our careers and we're dedicating it to the future generation of filmmakers because it can't end with us. Um, you know what I mean? Like you have to care about the next generation. I was great. Um, somebody said Gray Fredrickson. I was Gray's first intern when he came back um, 20 years ago and he was literally unpacking his office with his Academy Award from The Godfather that he's sitting on his desk and I got to learn how to do script coverage and uh, break down a production budget. I got to learn all about the entertainment industry from Gray. And then I went out to Hollywood. I spent 20 years cutting my teeth and now I'm back to do the same thing because I want to pass all of that knowledge that I got from working with Chuck Lorre and uh, Brian Fuller and all the geniuses that I got to work under that I get to bring all of that back 
and pour that into the next generation of filmmakers. And there aren't many places that you can go where people care that much about passing on that knowledge. And I would just say, take us up on it. Join the class, um, do a program, do a weekend workshop, learn about this industry and see if it's something that interests you. Um, but there is such an incredible film community here in Oklahoma. And there is so much room to Melody's point. Um, I had a conversation with Amazon the other day and they were talking about, you know, you guys have great stages now, you have uh, an incentive, you have uh, legislation that's interested in building on that incentive. You need more workers. And I was like, we got that. We're working on that. There are so many places for them to learn. You know, they need 10 to 15 crews to be able to move their projects here. Do you know what that means? That means that if you show up and you learn how to work in this industry, there are so many jobs that are, they're gonna gobble you up. Um, you go to California and you're one of 10,000 people who are trying to get a job holding a boom mic. You know, your, your odds of being able to do that here are so much greater if you just show up, take a class and learn. I agree with that. I'd like to jump in just briefly of, um, no matter where you fall, if you're an introvert or if you're an extrovert, no matter what your area of interest is, from creative to technical, there is a place for you in in film and television. You know, um, whether you're in front of the camera or you're dealing with people all the time or with whether you're dealing primarily with equipment, there's a place for you and a place for you. A place for you as you are, as an authentic human being, you belong here. So you don't have to try to be a pale whisper of what you think people want you to be. Everything that you are, I really encourage you to bring it to the industry that you love. We hope that it's going to be film and television, but show up. We're ready for you. Yeah. I've had four different students that I've uh, uh, taught that I've run into in Oklahoma City, one at Best Buy, one somewhere else. Anyway, they're, they're out working. And all four of them, they were eighth graders when I taught them, just like this, I said to me, you changed my life. Uh, that took me aback a little bit and I sort of downplayed. But what they meant was, you're the first person that's come into my school and said what everybody here has been saying that you can do it you don't just because you're from oklahoma doesn't stop you unless you let it stop you uh your parents can't stop you nobody can stop you if you want to do this it's up to you to do it but it's possible here it is absolutely possible to both learn because there are a lot of people here like me and richard rachel we're trying to teach people how to do this and it's nuts if you don't take us up on it because we all know what we're doing and we'd love to teach you how to take our place. I'm happy to train 100 people to take my job. Uh, most people don't say that, but in the film business, it's true because you pass your knowledge down. It's not like we're working at Safeway. So come on down. We'll teach you how to make a film and teach you how to have a career too. Let me just add something quickly too. We, we know that all of you watching know how to watch and you watch well, you're media critics because you're consuming media all day long. And sadly, these days, that's how you're going to school. You're also readers and writers. We know that no matter what else you might do in film, you've got those skills. Let me just mention for those interested, there's an app for the iPad and iPhone, probably Android as well, called Weekend Read. There's a free version. You can download and read screenplays from major motion pictures, studios, independents, and look at what that writing looks like. Hopefully it's for movies you've already watched. So you get to see what started, how it began on the written page. It's free. Maybe you can write reports on those things and get credit at school, but it's another great way in. And the best part of it is it doesn't cost you anything except your time and your engagement of your imagination. Uh, but check, there are a lot of links below this panel. Uh, and tied to all of the interviews that we're posting in connection with this workshop for junior achievement on a couple of dozen careers you might think about. There are dozens more we're not gonna be able to offer you in this limited context. But check the links that are available in this booth because they'll take you to a lot of these resources and we just 
hope that you enjoy exploring those as much as we've enjoyed sharing them with you. Thanks. Thank you. Any last I, thoughts before I, we go? I'll add one thing. If yeah. I were 14, um, what I would do right now would be to try to get myself on a film being produced in Oklahoma as an extra to see as a background actor so that you can get in there and see for yourself firsthand what it looks right. like when, when there's a movie being made. That's true. And quick plug for Chris Fryhoff for casting. Um, yeah. That is where you can sign up to be to be an extra. I know he's putting them on set all the time. Chris Fryhofer cast me in my very first play. He is responsible for my 24-year career. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't he the best? I love and I will uh, maybe wrap up some of some of this um, and just say that we send, so my office, Oklahoma Film and Music Office, you can go to our website at okfilmmusic.org. So being the state office, we're sort of, we're the go-to um, first point of contact when people are shopping, looking to film. But um, once they land and they start to crew up, um, they start looking for extras, et cetera. Um, we send out newsletters and email. So I know you know how to get email because you're in virtual learning. A lot of you are doing a virtual learning right now, um, but um, you can subscribe and get a newsletter and get emails in your inbox, um, social media, just go to our website, please, and um, connect with us. You know, everyone here talked about so much opportunity. There's job postings on our website. Um, we put those things out on social media often. Um, and, and we were all talking about creating and we, yes, we need content creators, but I just also want to emphasize that um, there's also all the behind the scenes. I mean, not just holding the iPhone or the camera, but the lighting, you know, the applying the makeup, preparing the meals, the food, sewing the costumes, editing. I mean, I know you guys can do editing and stop motion and um, Oklahoma is getting not just sound stages and all these tr um, training facilities for you guys, but like really high tech equipment um, that like the Mandalorians made on. So like there's so much technology that is literally in trucks that's literally, they're literally moving state of the art equipment in for you, for all of us um, to, to access. And so um, I would say create content. If I was 14, create content, but collaborate, you know, get a good network of people. Um, one door leads to another. So make sure you build that network. And the last thing that I would say is when you are creating content, remember that it, it stays with you. So, you know, whether, and it's not, you know, quality content is great and good storytelling is great. Um, you're not going to be perfect the first thing you do. Keep trying. There, there's so much opportunity. So again, we, do, we really welcome each one of you to join, join the action here in Oklahoma. Thank you. As you can see, there is excitement and enthusiasm and there's room for you and we want you to join us. So thank you all, everyone. And, um, and again, we've got plenty of links below. We got links, we got documents, we got videos, we got a whole bonanza of things to help introduce you to a career in film and television. Thank you so much for stopping by and spending your time with us. Bye everybody, hope to see you soon. Bye.